Hello. Uh, firstly, thank you for being here. Welcome. Um, so I'm going to sign a little bit. So part of our project is about the BSL, kind of the deaf community. So just to kind of show you actually how important it can be to try and actually, you know, make a difference by actually doing the thing that you're saying you're doing. But um, I'm not, you know, super smooth. So if I get it wrong or if I stop, then, you know, just um, thank you for being patient with me there. But so today, I want to tell you about how I went from where you are to where I am. And I'm not saying I'm, you know, like finished at the, at the end point, not at all. But hopefully, where you are to where I am feels like quite a big gap. And I can try and show you how to reduce that. And I'm going to talk you through my entire journey in a way I hope is interesting. Um, all right. So just to make you aware that it is this week, it's BSL, it's, um, it's sign language week. Uh, so two years ago, this week, there was a change and we managed to make BSL an official language, which is, you know, it's really exciting, it's really cool. And it's an interesting story that I can tell you about after. It's maybe not too important for today, but uh, just to make you aware that if you want to learn some sign language, then we do actually have some ways that you can do that. So, who am I? Um, I was a student here many, many, many years ago, and now I am many things, but a writer, director, firstly. So I've written and I've directed um, like commercials for the Navy, um, you know, kind of bigger companies like British Airways, and on top of that, making original stories, making my own films. I'm also a Skillshare top teacher, which is an interesting thing I want to tell you about because it's a way you can uh, make money when you leave uni, right? You want to support yourself, I'm going to try and tell you how to do that. Commercial DOP, and so some of the things I've shot as a DOP have played at um, BAFTA qualifying film festivals. So um, quite lucky there, you know, it's been a really exciting time. And I'm also a bit of a nerd and a bit of a space fan, a bit of an idiot, if I'm being honest. So there's no, um, you know, there's no me here, you here to my mind. When you talk to me, when you know me, I can be a little bit stupid. But why am I here? Um, so we are making a project. This project has been funded by um, a very large organization. I'm not allowed, I can't say who, um, but what I can say is that we're trying to raise awareness about two key things, which is the deaf community and trying to provide access, access and also about sustainability. So do people here care about sustainability, generally speaking, or not? Yeah, yeah? great. So we're talking about um, seagrass. Seagrass is a really interesting topic where it actually captures more carbon than trees. I'm not gonna get into that too much today, but if you want to learn more, then on Instagram, you can follow us and we're going to be posting a lot of stuff about that. And then, yeah, I want you to get to where I'm at quicker than where I got here. It's been 10 years since I was sat, not here. I was in the old building, you know, this wasn't here, this is nice and new. And I want you to get there a lot faster, a lot easier than what we've had to go through. It's not nice to have to, you know, kind of progress and work it all out yourself when you can have people tell you, don't do that, maybe do this. Um, but I thought, you know, how can I tell you my story in an interesting way? And I'm hoping, right, that you guys know about story structure. So I thought I'll try and tell my story in a similar way. So. With any luck, you'll recognize some of these things. So establish the world, sound familiar? Yeah? <laughs> One yes? <laughs> Great, all right. all right. So in story structure, we always start establishing the world. That's me when I was cute, when I was little. And I'm not gonna start from the very beginning, right? We haven't got that long. But this is where things get a little bit more interesting. And you will see some very embarrassing photos of me today, but fine, you know, it's for your benefit, not mine. So this was when I thought I was cool, playing the saxophone. Um, love the hairstyle and the hat, very, very bold. And then the one in the middle, that is, um, I used to do drama, right, theatre. I wanted to be an actor, but I also loved music. And, I, you know, not very good photographer, but I was trying photography. And one day, I realised, oh, 
You take one, two, and three, you put it together, you get film. So I came to university, never made a film. I was the only person to have never made a film on the course. And this is the only place I got into, right? So my, my story kind of started with a bit of rejection. And that's fine. That's going to happen in your career. Just accept it. But I did move beyond that, thankfully. And I'm going to show a few films I've made over the years. And I'm going to start with just a very simple film, right? This isn't great by any means. Um, but I'm from Portsmouth, so, you know, rivals, <laughs> but that's, that's my, my hometown. And I got my first camera, and I just went out one night and made a film. So I'm just going to play it. It's only two minutes long. It's not fantastic, but it's just to give you an idea of where I kind of started. Okay. So, you know, simple, it's, it's nothing great, but it kind of got me started. You know, I want to go out, I care about feeling more than I care about the story, necessarily. And that's kind of where I started, just trying to understand feeling. So this was me at uni, um, my best days. I lost a game of FIFA, so I had to have my chest waxed. And that's me thinking I could dance. And that's me after these events. Um, you know, I, I had a pretty bad time at uni, to be honest with you. I, I found it probably like the hardest time of my life. But within there, Looking back, I can kind of see there were, there were times where actually, you know, I did have some fun. I'm not going to play that clip, but if you want to watch it later, that's where I set a firework into a wall. Didn't, didn't go well. Um, all right, so the next step in story structure is you meet people who are going to help you. And mentors or friends, kind of a bit of both. Um, so when I was at uni, Les Mis, you might know that film, right? They asked people, they asked universities, OK, we're looking for men who are happy to have their heads shaved off, come be an extra in the film. And I was like, sure, yeah, why not? And it was great. And I learned so much just by being there. If you want to see me, you can see half of my head in the film. So a nice little moment to fame right there. But really, where my kind of um, progression in film came was meeting people who were like me, who kind of just wanted to make films over and over and over again. And one of those people is Riyad Hack. So he's also from Portsmouth. And we made so many films together. Every time they got better and better and better. And you can see, really, from day one to now, 10 years on, we're still like that, every project. And you, you build more and more of those relationships. So McKenna, we met maybe four years ago. And now we're you know, working very tightly on the biggest project of my career. So there's one film. I, I absolutely hate showing this, but I think it's interesting. Because this film got me my first full-time job. And I, I made this outside of university. So it wasn't assessed or anything. Just one summer, I went, I'm going to go make a film and just do what I want to do. And like I say, so after I you know, finished university, that's me graduating there, um, something exciting happened. I got offered my first full-time job. And that was working at the RNLI, which is the kind of lifeboat charity. And when this came in, right, people, you know, friends, they, they said, that's, that's the end of your film career. You know, that's corporate, whatever. This is the best thing I've ever done in my whole life. And I think it's important to say that you know, your pathway it can be different. It doesn't have to be the same as this person and this person. You, you can all get there different routes. So McKenna and I have very different paths, but we're still here on the same project. And first off, though, I almost didn't take it. You know, I wanted to reject it. Like, why would I do that? And this is really stupid, right? You know, I was living my best life thinking. I work at the Spinnaker Tower. I worked at the Portsmouth Museum, worked in a shoe shop, and I'd met people who were just my friends. And I thought, I don't want to leave my friends. That would have been the worst choice I ever could have made, because it's like you know, half an hour away. So I did accept the call, which is good. Good choice. So crossing the threshold, um, I got to see so many things taking this job. 
I got some very bad photos from here as well. Like my whole life is basically just a compilation of terrible photos. Um, but this was my tiny little corner office. And the best bit about it was meeting another mentor. So Mike here, he, he taught me, taught me so much. I learned so much just one year before he left. But in that one year, he taught me everything I needed to know about cameras and sound to a good enough point that I could continue to progress by myself. And if you can find these people who are gonna like help you and support you, brilliant. Why, why not? You know, why don't you want that? So I also met, um, so this is Harrison. So I employed him. So he was below me technically, but for me, you still help each other, right? So I trained him, then he taught me stuff and you kind of do this and you keep progressing. There's no top and bottom. There's kind of overlap, right? And this is really, so story structure, fun and games. You should hopefully know this, but if you don't, you, you should learn it. It's really great. So basically, when you start a new adventure, you have a lot of fun and you see a lot of new things. And it's really exciting. And I did. I got to go all around Britain. So, you know, uh, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, um, many beaches, lots of sea surfing, right? London, I went to London quite a lot as well. But beyond that, I got to go around the world. So it's very lucky. I went to Greece here, Zanzibar, uh, Bangladesh, 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 and so many new experiences that I never would have had without this job. So my point here is if you get something and, and people start to say, you know, don't do that, it's your choice, right? If you think, actually, there is something for me to, to have from this, do it, you know, live your own pathway. So I will play this. Um, this film is, it's like one of my favorite, you know, favorite films I've made, but also very sad because it never got seen. So we, we made it for the UN and the World Health Organization, so organization, and it played there, but never went online, really. Um, and at the time, that was, that was big for me. This was like the biggest film I'd made. And for, for my career, I'm like, great. People are going to see this and think, wow, isn't he talented? So I was meant to give a warning about that. That's the next slide. Come back to that. <laughs> but um, but it, ne it never got to go out publicly, really. Um, it is now, but this is 10 years on. But hopefully, you will see here, it's the start of where my idea started to come out a little bit about visual storytelling. The other big thing about this job is it educated me about so many things outside of film. And that will help you progress in so many ways. So script writing or just you as a person starting to kind of develop. And for me, so learning about that kind of impact of drowning around the world, you know, opened my eyes to the filmmaker I wanted to be. I wanted to tell stories that are actually going to make a difference. And that, that's important to have something that you feel belongs to you, right? Um, but yes, it did lead to some problems. So after this trip, I became gluten intolerant, couldn't have it, um, had a lot of bites and things. So no amazing experience is without its uh, bad side, right? I got very sick on that trip, very, very sick. But the films kept coming and the progression kept happening. And my career, I'm loving this, this is fantastic. I'm really beginning to expand my ability. Um, I might not play this, but if you watch on the link that I will send out, you can give this a watch. My point is, it's up to you to keep developing, to keep improving, right? And to do that, every single time that you make a film, you need to look at it and look back and go, you know, honestly, is it good? How can it be better? But this, this job, it, it touched my heart a little bit because um, I got to make a film where my, my grandmom lives, grandmom and nan, and start to really get that like personal experience coming into it. Now, this is where the B story comes in. So in film, people know what a B, B story is? Yeah, a little bit, All right? My B story outside of film, it's just, just my life, right? And my other interests. 
And this will become important for this project that we now have funding for. These are the things that got there. But just to show you, um, you know, I, I lived here in a house with a, with a tiki bar in the garden, which is great. Um, lived by the beach, you know, fantastic. Who doesn't love that? And basically just had a great time. And I got to go to uh, Canada as well. And here, I started to understand I can make films about things outside of, you know, the R and L.I. I can do my own things. So I made this using a tiny pocket camera, like with a fixed lens that comes in and out. But I, I think it's worth seeing to kind of get a flavor of how you can, yeah, just stretch your legs a little bit creatively. So it's, a, you know, it's very simple. Uh, it's just a travel film. But it started making me create a little bit more kind of my own thing, things that I can hold on to a bit more. And this term, approaching the innermost cave, so usually in film, kind of the midway point, you think you're going to succeed, and then everything turns. And for me, I was starting to make real progress. I was getting invited to talk at panels, um, you know, getting into magazines, winning awards, etc. And this is where things I was looking ahead beyond the job. How can I, in my career, really start to progress? And I thought, great. I had, I had an opportunity here. So work, we're going to do a cinema advert. And they said to me, yeah, you know, maybe you can direct it. And I've been working towards this goal. And then one day, we had a new person come in, top of, the, top of the room. She'd never seen my work, but she sat me down. And she said, you don't have the experience. You don't have the skills. You're not making it which, you know, hurt. I was there like, this is frustrating and sad, and maybe I'm actually not good enough. Two days later, I don't lie here, I got a phone call from a company outside of the work saying, hey, we have this opportunity to direct an advert for the RNLI. We've seen your work, we think you'd be perfect. Do you want to do it? And, I, and I'm there like, my own company won't give me the same opportunity that the outside industry is trying to do. That told me everything I needed to know. If I want to progress, I had to leave. So <laughs> this, was, this was their reaction to you know, me wanting to direct this advert. It's like, you are not good enough. This was their reaction when I said, I have been offered this opportunity, this job outside. right? And I started to think, well, just how many opportunities are there for me outside of this? Good little gift, that one. I like that one. Um, all right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, cool. So I went freelance, right? Went self-employed. How many people here are thinking about this? Have interest? Put your hand up if you. OK, all right. Why, right? You want that freedom. You want the variety, kind of different opportunities. I tell you now, it, it's quite hard for many reasons, right? Financially, it's difficult. Mental health is pretty tough. Um, it is great, it is rewarding, but I'm going to tell you some of the things to be careful about if you are, you know, maybe a little bit kind of worried. Um, but I started with this old camera. People know this? Can it, you know, prize if you know it? No? No, no, not quite. No, it's a Sony, I'll give you that. It's a Sony camera. This is the FS. Uh, what, seven, 700, right? It's now like oh, how, 11 years old, right? I've shot TV ads on this, you know, documentaries, films that have screened at larger festivals. Um, you, all you need is something that you know better than anyone else does. If you know your camera, great. You know, shot uh, HD, you know, yes, 4K external, but internal, only HD. And my first job as a freelancer, so my sister, she works at a um, sustainability company. And they were looking for a filmmaker. And she put me forward, and I got the job. Um, I'm not going to play this. Again, you can go watch this on your own if you want to. But a, a similar thing started to happen where I could recognize in myself, I'm interested in making content that actually is important, or it, it feels kind of rewarding, you know, it feels good. I don't really want to go make films about, I don't know, like a pen or something. It wasn't really where I was at. 
So now, going self-employed, more opportunities, right? Ireland, uh, Switzerland, Devon, Germany. And more than that, I got opportunities to learn at a much quicker rate because now I was getting onto film sets around the country. So Wayne Yip, he directed um, Utopia, Channel 4, if you know that. It's quite old now. This was directed by Salaman Lichtelm, if anyone knows him. Very, very talented director. This is Riyadh, again. So this was his first funded uh, short film. And Natalie, brilliant actress there. But, you know, you also get to have fun, right? This here, I was directing a commercial and one of the actors didn't show up. So, you know, guess, guess who's doing that role that day? It was very cold, very, very cold. Madagascar, making a short little documentary. In jail, right? Making a, a music video in jail. What a cool experience. And then in the sea, my work always takes me back to the sea. I'm not going to play that because it's not really relevant. Um, but one of the best trips was to Hungary. So we, we flew out and it was for a competition and you had to make a film um, in seven days, I think it was. So we, you know, just four of us went and we made this film. And it, it is incredible to be able to make a film and one week later, you have it. You know, you just go take it to a festival. None of this one month, three months, one year later, you just have it and then you go and you progress. So speed is helpful, right? I've done quite a lot of um, 48 hour film challenges. Tough, very difficult, you know, very tiring, but um, yeah, really good practice. Uh, yeah, I think mm, I kind of I don't want to show you too much of the boring stuff, but um, I will I will show you this. So I wanted to make something that had a sustainability theme to it, and I made this uh, kind of Christmas film. So yeah, have a have a look, see what you think. I'm not offended if you hate it. So I hoped that that would lead to kind of opportunities, you know, like John Lewis adverts, right? But what it actually led to is an advert for the Royal Navy, which was like, OK, how? How has that happened? So the actor, he, he knew someone who was from the Navy. Sometimes in film, it is who you know, but it's also who the people around you know. And if you do a good job, and if you're nice, you know, you're pleasant to work with, then you will get opportunities here, there, everywhere. Um, Again, so I'm not going to play this one, or I've got a few films here. Bing Pot. I can't remember why that's in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I think because, so yeah, I, I started to make these films that were beginning to win things, right? I was beginning to get recognized in, in the bigger world. And one of them is this film. So I, I really, I decided to go self-employed because I knew I want to tell my own stories. But when I first went self-employed, I was too scared. I didn't want to do it. You know, I felt quite nervous about it. Um, and then I was like, no, I decided this is why I am going to go do it. And this film is a bit long to show here, but it won. Um, so do you know Rode, the microphone company? They do a global competition, and it won Best Drama. And that got me lots of equipment, which was fantastic, and just understanding Actually, when you start to win things, it does kind of push you along nicely. There's a behind the scenes. If you, if you want to watch the behind the scenes on uh, YouTube, it's on there. Um, and then eventually, years later, I won kind of the biggest thing of my career. So I wrote a, a script and it, it's about like science. Um, it's about, I don't know, like, History, you know, is set in uh, the Cold War, and it won this giant competition, which was unbelievable. And for me, I'd always put film ahead of my family, which is not maybe the best thing to do. And when I when I won this, and I told my nan, she was just like 
so happy for me that it actually hit me really hard, had a big impact on me. Um, but here's the log line. So, a marginalized jazz musician and blackmailed British consul find themselves with the chance to change their lives and society forever in the newly divided city of Berlin, altering the course of history as we know it in this Cold War drama. So all of my interests from over the years, you know, playing the saxophone came into the script. Quite interested in science came into the script. Everything that makes me me different from what makes you you is what made this kind of win. And that's something that you can do, right? Whatever your unique thing is, hold on to that. That is what you're going to have that is different from everyone else. This is actually how McKenna and I started to work together. Because they said, OK, one week from now, you're going to pitch this to companies who have made, um, who, what they made? Arrival, The Joker. It's like, wow, th this is massive. What, what an opportunity. And it was during COVID, the coronavirus. So we had two, two weeks to create this um, short proof of concept film. Is it good? I'm not sure. But it, it's, it's not the film that we wanted to make. It's not the scene. I wanted a different scene. But because of the coronavirus, we could have six people only. You know, one day is very difficult. And it costs money, and it was you know, tiring. And of course, people say, well, it's not very good, is it? But people will always say stuff about you. And maybe it's more of a reflection of what they're experiencing, right? Very different to your life. So side, quick little thing, McKenna, uh, she's a producer, and this is her company here, kind of offers help and advice. If you're interested in producing, McKenna's your person. Um, so yeah, this is the short we made. And again, this is on YouTube. So if you want to watch it, go there. It's, uh, it's seven minutes, so it's a bit long. Um, but, so here we go. Kind of the, the change in storytelling. You have the bad guys start to close in and things get tough and tough and tough. And for me, you know, I'd, I'd already had um, like the, the problems at the RNLI, which is a great company. I, I love what they do. But for me personally, my career, it was a bit tough to hear about, you know, you're not experienced enough, you're not good enough. Um, as a, as a self-employed person, something that you will have to kind of accept is that you're going to be driving a lot. You're going to be away from home a lot. Your kind of schedule, your routine, it's not going to be really in your hands as much as you want. So I was, you know, Scotland, uh, Madagascar, London, Bath, you know, Gloucestershire, York, all these places within like one week, two weeks, and it is tiring and it's mentally tough. When, you know, when your partner is like, where are you? It, it becomes a very difficult thing for you. And this is where the B story kind of returns. I thought, I want something for me, something that I can control. Because with work, it's, it's very difficult when you have a client who says, no, you need to be here on this date. And you go, OK. But I knew for me, I wanted, no, I can control this. If, if I fail at this, it's my fault. If I succeed, then it's because of me. And running is what I thought, right? Um, so I started, and th this is a B story, but it comes back in later. So I did a 100 kilometer run across two days, and I did it with very broken knees, which was not good. But I finished, you know? Finishing that made me think, I, ca I can do things. If I, if I decide I want to do it, I'll go do it. And that lesson is, when, when you can learn that and hold on to that as your thing, then it, then it is a feeling like nothing else. So, so now, with this project, it is difficult. We still have to raise another 5K we on now, because so far we have 25, 20K? How much have we got? 22. So we got offered uh, 15K from this funding body, but to get that, we have to raise the rest first. And so our crowd funder has three at the minute. Uh, we've got 5K from outside companies, which is you know, a very interesting topic to talk about maybe later. Um, but because I've done this, I know we can do it. 
That's what I'm trying to get at here. And a new interest popped into my life, BSL. Same reason. I wanted to learn something and have a reason that for me, I will be home. I will be home every single Thursday night, no matter what. Because for me, I want to do this. So you know, I went to college evening class, started learning. And then obviously, Corona hit, right? A very bad timing for me. So the day that it got announced that we were having a lockdown, it was my first, my first proper big opportunity to just direct for a commercial. Didn't have to worry about producing anything else. And then it ended, you know, day one, nope, that's it, done. And all is lost, right? Classical storytelling, hopefully this sounds familiar. I was like, okay, beginning to feel a little bit depressed now. Because on top of the coronavirus, on top of feeling tired from traveling around, I started having clients, especially after COVID, who, who just were you know, not nice people to work with. And it happened like two, three times within like one, two months. And it gave me problems sleeping. You know, I just couldn't fall asleep. Um, I was very anxious. And again, if you go self-employed, something to think about is how do you kind of protect your own self-worth, right? You, you have worth. And sometimes clients tend to forget that. And I had um, two very bad experiences that made me think, maybe this is, maybe this is not right. And I was getting opportunities, like the budgets were getting bigger and bigger, but my happiness was getting down and down and down. So that's where, um, break into part three. I thought, okay, I see it, I'm going all in. And I really started learning BSL in a one-to-one -one way with a deaf tutor. And I went back to college. To, to learn about science. Because I was, I was writing scripts, but I couldn't actually understand some of the things that I was reading about. So, you know, as a, I don't know, how old was I? Let's say 20, 29 year old guy, I went back to college, had a great time. I hated university, I love college. That's generally, you know, and I teach at university now. So, but to get there, it, you need money, right, to live. And I was saying, no, I don't want to work with clients much more. So obviously my money was coming down and down and down. And this is where I found um, Skillshare. In Skillshare, they, they teach different things. And you can teach. So if you want to kind of like fund you know, your own experiences, you will have skills, right? You know, you've got a camera there. Uh, you, you're talking about documentaries. You know, marketing was mentioned somewhere. You have skills that you can teach people. So, I've made so far about uh, 15 grand from Skillshare, which is nice. It's kind of supported me through like, you know, difficult times where you, you just need that extra bit of money coming in. And I also started to create a Notion. People know Notion in the room? Yeah, so I started to create Notion templates. That's made me one grand, one and a half grand so far. So these different things. And I started these reviews. People were thankful for me, for what I was doing. This was so different from client work over here, where it was like, job done, see you later. Now I actually had feedback, and I was starting to feel teaching can be quite nice when, when you get people saying, oh, thanks. Like, OK, good, it's worthwhile doing. Um, quick reminder, if you want six months free to Skillshare, you need to at some point snap a photo, share it to Instagram, tag us, we're giving away six months free Skillshare to someone in the room. Um, so yeah, any point during today, just do that. And that is our handle there, Finding Green Grass. We also have personal Instagram that you can um, follow. You know, we're very chill about whoever, whatever. Um, yeah, and then this Friday, we'll, we'll say who's got it. But yes, so progressing on, I started teaching at university which was so, so scary. You know, day one, you walk in and you have 60 people looking at you. And like, I'm, I'm just a person like you, right? I'm just a, just a filmmaker trying to do something and trying to tell you things that I hope are helpful. Um, but, you know, day one, we had the fire alarm go off twice. I didn't know where I was going. So I was like walking the students out like, uh, where, where's the door? So. But this did 
help me start to actually to find something in me. And you know, if I, if I teach forever, who knows? But I do now know that I can come talk to people in a room like this and really get something back and hope I give something across. And this is where this project comes into it. So this is how, all of this is how I've gone from where you are at university to where we are now, funded original short film, happy, generally speaking, with what I'm doing in life. We took everything that we loved and we put it all together into this script. So BSL, you know, the deaf community, sustainability, university, right, talking about that. This script is what has landed us the opportunity and this script only exists because of everything in the B story, everything outside of film. So now this is where we're at, right? 15K from a film fund, 5K from businesses. And to you, you might think, how the hell do you get a business to support a short film? It's actually quite easy. Um, you just need to, to show them the value they can get from it. You know, that's a conversation for another day. Um, and now we're, I think we're more than this now, aren't we? We're like 3.3 or something. But in, a, in day one, we had one or 2K, and it's like 2K maybe? Yeah. And this is quite normal to have a lull in the middle and pick up at the end. Um, but it was important is that for us, this is a big project that we hope will kind of springboard to the next step know, feature films, right? And McKenna's already produced one or two small independent feature films. Um, so yes, so what comes next? Classical storytelling, you gather the team, right? This is what we're doing. McKenna and I, Riyadh and I, and in the middle, this is a deaf filmmaker, a camera operator, you know? And we, we want to make this film with half and half hearing and deaf crew, which is difficult. You know, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. Why? Well, I also have people like you that I, you know, I've known for years who want to be involved, but I'm like, mm, sorry, I've only got like two hearing spaces left, you know, but it's why we're doing it is we want to improve opportunities for everyone. It's very easy. And I really hope in this room, you, you start to look outside of, you know, your kind of experience because a diverse film set really makes for a better film and a better experience in my mind. Um, yeah, and also my students have been fantastic. They've all supported me in some way. You know, on day one, our crowdfunder video got uh, 8,000 shares or something like that, or week one or something. So I'm gonna show you this crowdfunding video because it, it kind of wraps everything up to where we are now and also I want you to see that actually how a crowdfunding video, it can be different from just someone talking to camera. Because in here is that story structure that we've been through. You should see it, right? Inciting incident, midpoint, bad guys closing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if you want to see our crowdfunding page, it's there. But um, yeah, I'll play the video. In all my years making films, I've never told the story that I want to tell. That's about to change. You might know me, you might not. Either way, let me give you a sneak peek into what this film is about and why there's more for you here than you might think. to check if you heard read the T's and C's. No. Okay, um, yeah, we have to raise the other half of the funds by mid-April or we lose the funding. Hey, Nuska, how are you? 
you know, for us, it's really important that when we're talking about seagrass, we're getting it right. We know the stats, like 92% of it being eradicated from the seabed, but do it in a way that's kind of engaging and interesting and different. Yeah, Fuzzy, thank you so much for just even considering. So when we're thinking about which brands to approach, you're right up there at the top of our list because we, we want to work with people who appreciate and value the same things that we do. And also explores how we need to do more for the deaf community to have opportunities in science. So many complicated, long Latin words, we just haven't created a science them yet and we're missing out on, you know, so many talented scientists just because they're not given the language to work with. Hey, I uh, just had an email from Ningvano and they've said yes. According to the NDCS, uh, more than a quarter percent of deaf students at university are still waiting for support uh, six months after they've started. Yeah, so we really want it to be more than just a film. We're going to go do a tour at 10 different universities around the country. We've got five confirmed so far. Growing their awareness of where their curiosity can take them, learning the skills to help them support themselves, just as Skillshare has helped me do over the years. Thank you so much. That is beyond generous. That is far more than what we were expecting. All right, have a nice day. Bye. Yes. So we're going to run some workshops. Going freelance, I think, would be the longer form, wouldn't it? Because obviously we can talk about very much our experience on the same project. Looking forward to it. That's... So it's bad news, I'm afraid. They've come back and they've said it's a no. Um, I do know some other people and I've still got a couple on my list. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, all right. Thanks anyway. Sure, okay. Well, look, if anything changes, let me know. Um, but yeah, thanks for all considering anyway. <sighs> so I think we're going to have to look at other funding options and I've landed at crowdfunding. I just hate how it's always kind of like it's what we get out of it is a way we could like give something back. I've thought about we can do it in a way that's more aligned with the way that we like to work. You know your Skillshare videos? Yeah. I was thinking maybe you could do something similar to that and we could package it up as a reward or a perk. That sounds great. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Then I'd want to set my camera to a warmer white balance, the light behind the person. So we did it. There it is. Uh, I've had a bit of a brainwave, so I think there's a couple of things I can actually offer. I can teach about crowdfunding campaign, um, and I think I could put up one to ones. Time's getting pretty tight. I think we just have to go for it. I was wondering if you've ever thought about having your clothing, your fashion line, in a film. Is that something that you might be interested in? Nat has come back and she said that we can have three actor headshot packages for our crowdfunder campaign. Just amazing. think it's now or never. Um, so yes, so we really wanted to make something different from your usual thing so it stands out and it did, you know, we, we've raised quite a lot already which is really fantastic. Um, so just a kind of recap reminder, um, it is Sign Language Week. And if you, if you want to learn a little bit, then Lingvano, they are also sponsoring us. They are helping us make this film. And it's an app you can download, and there you can learn a little bit. You know, it's, it's free for seven days, I think, seven days. Um, so I encourage you to learn it, right? It's really helpful for everyone. Um, 
And it's just a really interesting culture to start to understand. But I want to leave you with this. If you want to kind of really progress in your career, then if you are prepared to just start, to just try, break things, if you're prepared to just try, right, then you will get friends and you will get allies who want to go there with you, progress together. As I was saying, Riyad and I have done this our whole career. So he does something amazing, then I do something a little bit more, not amazing, but whatever, then he does that, and it helps us kind of get there together. Every rejection, criticism, and failure, and you will have many. You know, I've been criticized a lot, and, and people tell me they, they're not shy about it, but it's fine. It can lead to an opportunity, and it just takes the willingness to understand and to learn from it. You can do that. No matter what people say, you take out the, the feeling from it, take out the emotion. What can you learn? I was in, um, in an interview for so the final three of a funding opportunity, and they literally laughed me out of the room. And we had, a, we had a coffee machine going on in the background. So whilst I'm trying to talk about you know, this really important subject for my film, I had this person over there going, do you want a latte? Do you want this? And the panel just like, uh, mm -mm. I've never felt more frustrated coming out of that. And even before I went in, I overheard um, a girl coming out saying, hey, mum, yeah, I've got it. They've offered it to me. I didn't know if it was that opportunity, but it certainly felt like it. But most important, there are no details. Whatever path you take doesn't have to be the same as someone else. As long as it's yours and it feels right to you, every step I've made is different. You know, sometimes people even think teaching. Well, how does teaching, it's not making. I'm doing both. I, I teach and I make. And actually teaching has helped me learn so much. If I have to teach about color grading, then I better know it, right? So I'm learning. Like, not, not the day before, but I'm learning more and more and more. And now I teach 60 millimeter film. I'd never done that before, but now I'm actually able to you know, load it, kind of teach others how to do it. So whatever path you take, it's all part of the journey for you. I um, can't believe I broke that, it's brand new. <laughs> um, so firstly, uh, just thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Secondly, I hope it's kind of helped you a little bit, you know, a little bit. Um, thirdly, if you are interested and you want to follow what we are doing, then you're very welcome. Finding Green Grass is our Instagram project page. Uh, I am Aaron Atkinson, so that's my Instagram page. McKenna's The Movie Method. These are our partners, Lingvano, Skillshare, Project Seagrass, and Essex Film Collective. Essex Film Collective, really fantastic organization. They will, they've just started a new film festival, so you know, we'll, we'll go this year, so maybe we'll see you there. Um, and if you are curious to, to learn more from me or McKenna, um, part of our crowdfunding campaign, we're actually doing yeah, video lessons and one-to-ones and things. So if I very, very quickly just show you that. Um, do you reckon just come up on Google? Green grass. Here we go. Is this us? I guess so. OK, so sure. We have these different things, right? We're giving away Notion templates, um, essay writing workshops, script writing workshops, um, beginner budgeting workshops. And then you know, as we kind of come down, we get a little bit more advanced, uh, 60 mil loading workshop. And then right down the bottom, there's a bit more like uh, bigger stuff. I'm not, I'm not trying to do a hard sell here. I'm just saying if you're interested, then you know, at least stay in touch. We're, we're very happy just to talk with whoever, right? We love film. If you love film, then great. Why, why wouldn't we talk? Um, but yeah, if you're interested, that's that. So yeah, otherwise, uh, thank you. And I'm very happy to answer any questions you might have for me. I'm sure McKenna would do the same. But thank you for being here. So my mum is hard of hearing, um, but that wasn't really the starter. I just wanted a, wanted a reason to come home once a week. That was it. And signing up to an evening course, and sign language was on there. And I was like, oh, that, I'm always curious about it. Why not? So that, that's how it started. And then it's just stuck. I've, I've had two years out, so my signing is a little bit bad right now. Um, I can feel what I'm getting wrong. But um, it's, it's there in the back of my head. If I took you know, like a week, it's just time. But if I took a week out and more lessons one-to-one, -one, then they'd get back to there.
So yeah, I recommend it. It's a really, especially as visual learners, sign language, for me, I can't learn Spanish or anything like that. But signing tends to kind of stay in there a little bit because I can just think about the shapes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, do you guys learn Albert training here? No? Albert training? So Albert, A-L-B-E-R-T, We Are Albert, is a sustainability film organization, and you can get an Albert certification. So our project will be Albert certified. Um, that's something that the industry is pushing for now. Like, every single film you make should have that. Um, the themes, for sure, is the way that we're making films more sustainable? You know, there's a lot of driving, a lot of flying, a lot of single use materials. We're trying really hard. So, um, you know, kind of recycling, upcycling. I think it can come across in the story or it can come across in the way you're doing it, or ideally both. I would say it's definitely an improvement for sure. People are more aware. We can have the conversation now. Yeah. I think a lot of times productions will shoot it down because it's, it's more expensive. Um, so you need to put in sustainability practices on film set can be hard. Um, but I think because the awareness is kind of getting there, we can at least start those conversations now and kind of try and push the budget that way. Yeah. But job, job opportunities are coming up. So like a sustainability officer. So we have one of my, not my student, but a student at my university. She's studying science and she's deaf. So she's going to be our sustainability officer, um, which is really exciting. And that's a job that you could start to do and you'll get onto bigger productions, right? And quite a nice role. Um, you just have to be a bit like, no, you do this, this is the way, um, this is the way. But I, uh, yeah, I definitely think it's improving, I hope. But I will say batteries in your cameras and your screens, whatever, they use cobalt. Cobalt um, is currently mined in the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo. and the, the people impact is it's pretty bad there. They're looking at maybe doing seabed mining to get cobalt, um, but then that damages the environment and then carbon emissions, etc. What's the solution here? You know, okay, do we not use batteries? Do we use batteries? So it's it's improving, but the more we improve, the more problems we're encountering. So it's hard to say. But there's only so much doing, but the more you can do, the better, right? And you kind of got to hold yourself accountable because you know if you're running a film set, going into the film industry, you kind of have to see how you contributing to the problem or are you actively trying the best that you can um, to go in even not the opposite direction, just not as bad as yeah. it currently is and just make incremental changes um, and kind of decide for yourself where you want to be and what you want to yourself accountable to. Is anyone setting up their own production company in here, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So there, there's something called the climate agreement where you can sign up and you're basically pledging, it's in this country, I'm not going to fly. If it's this or this, I'm going to do it this way and it's like holding you accountable. And at the end of the year, you do a little breakdown. Um, something that looks good for you, you know, you have it on a website. Yeah, I'm part of this climate agreement. And we're not all perfect. You know, you don't have to uphold yourself to every single one. Like, especially when you're <laughs> starting out, you don't have giant budgets, it is a bit harder. Mm. But it's just doing what you can with what you have. Yeah, it's just like don't order off Amazon if you can go to the shop next door or ask a friend. Yeah, we've got, um, so the costume in our film, what she's wearing, is designed by my friend and she uses, she buys old material, makes the thing. And then we're also gonna ask everyone I know, can you just send me any clothes you don't want so I have a room filled with clothes, but in there we've now got a free wardrobe, right? That's, that's the thinking. And then after, I can go give it to you know, charity or whatever. Um, fast fashion is actually like incredibly damaging. I think it's gonna be, it's going to be the third biggest contributor to emissions in the near future. It really is, yeah. And like the water pollution as well, it's like terrible, right? Um, so moving away from fast fashion would be good. All right, well, thank you very much. We'll, we'll be hanging around. So if you want to talk to us, you know, just one when you can. But thank you very much for being here. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it.